You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. May I have your attention, everybody? I'd like to call this meeting to order. The RTM will be convened on Wednesday, October 12, 2022, at 8 p.m. to consider and act upon the following matters. Will everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number one, roll call. Yikes. Good evening. Representative Alphone. Here. Representative Amore. Here. Representative Anderson. Here. Representative Barron. Here. Representative Black. Here. Representative Bonnenberger. Here. Representative Brooks. Representative Conklin? Here. Representative Everson? Here. Representative Erlanger is absent. <clears throat> Representative Flanagan? Present. Representative Greenberg? Uh, online. Online? Zoom. Thank you. Representative Healy? Present. Representative Henschel? Here. Representative Hines? Representative Ingraham? Here. Representative Kelly? Here. Representative Leach is present. Representative Maresca? Here. Representative Preet? Here. Representative Riccio? Present. Representative Shrestha? Present. Representative Sires? Present. Representative Stepanik? Here. Representative Sullivan? Here. Representative Torelli? Absent. Absent. Representative Tuhill. Here. <clears throat> Representative Verderam. Here. Representative Witkowski. Here. And Representative Wells. Did you get one Heinz? No. Heinz is on. Zoom. He's out? Okay. On, he's, on Zoom. he's on Zoom. He's on Zoom. Thank you. I don't think she got it. And then is Representative Wells absent? Absent. Okay. Okay, that's it. So we have one, two, four people absent. And we got some Selectman Cosgrove. So for ex officios, I have Higgins. first Selectman Cosgrove, um, Selectman Higgins, Town Clerk Arpin. Who am I missing? That's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion to move item 13 to the top of the call. <coughs> Motion on the floor. Is there a second to move Second. item number 13 to the top of the call? Point of information, maybe. Uh, I would do reception of communication because yeah. there may be some of those things. No, I, 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 we can move the item 13 up on the call, but, but I'll do the communications and everything before that. Yeah. In minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Item 13 is going to move up it to, to four. Right. Yeah. Okay, so there's a motion. Motion on okay. the floor is my second. Is, uh, all the, any discussion? Who seconded? Rick Hill. Rick Hill. Thank you. All those in favor, second by by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Item is moved up. <clears throat> Moving on to item three, uh, item two, I should say, which would be approval minutes of the previous meeting. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the uh, minutes of the previous meeting signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Minutes are approved without exception. <clears throat> Item number 
three would be receptions of communi communications, reports of committees and citizens' petitions. I have a few items here, and I believe I have sent you everything. If not, just let me know. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a letter here from uh, Frank Carano, president of the Brantford Arts and Cultural Alliance. Uh, dear Mr. Moderator, the Brantford Board of Finance has approved a grant of 70000 to Brantford Arts and Cultural Alliance BACA. The funds are to be drawn from the town's federal ARPA funding, which is available to support such initiatives as enhancing the economic development growth of the community. American Rescue Plan funding enables EDA to provide larger, more transformational investments across the nation while utilizing its greatest strengths, including flexible funding to support community-led economic development. We believe that the funds, if approved, will support that goal. The grant that is before you will provide financial assistance to the Baca Gallery on 1004 Main Street during this period of growth and development. The existence of the gallery has already been proven to be a significant economic driver to the Brantford Center, with visitors to the gallery also engaging with other downtown businesses, such as restaurants and retail stores. Over 20 of our business neighbors on Main Street have signed a letter of support, which we believe is an indication of their recognition of the value of, to them. But Baca is more than the gallery. Baca has offered free to the public numerous opportunities for the community to participate in arts based on experience such as arts exhibits, musical entertainment, artesian markets on the green, painted doors, and grand <coughs> event at the Army celebrating Brantford's 375th. And our involvement with the Brantford Festival has proved to be very successful. We also engage Brantford students as exhibitors in town galleries as a commitment to supporting young artists. We believe that all of these activities have enhanced the quality of life for you, for the community residents. The growth and development of the gallery will be well served and the resources that will be available through the grant. Meanwhile, BACA will continue to raise funds to supplement the revenue from sales and artist rentals and income. We have already raised over 30,000 this year from activities which are organized and we continue to do in our outgoing efforts to support the gallery. We are asking the RTM to approve this grant as an investment in the future development of the town center as a destination for visitors who want to enjoy a visit to the gallery and everything else on the town has offered. I have another letter here from uh, Jerry Shaw, uh, 188 Thimble Islands Road, Brantford, Connecticut. Uh, dear Mr. Moderator, Recently, my wife Jane escaped death and was serious injury when the car she was driving along Leeds Island Road was struck by a fallen tree during a, mi a minor windstorm. The fallen tree totaled the car. What is totally random? What was a totally random and unavoidable event, or could prevent ma preventive maintenance and the deployment of professional arborists at least reduce the odds of the re reoccurrence? We cannot underestimate the importance of a tree warden particularly with global climate changes producing higher wind velocities. In the Connecticut Supreme Court opinion, 17 CS 108, the court states that the tree warden has exclusive control of all trees standing in whole or in part within the limits of the highway, even though the trees stand on private grounds. This means that the tree that struck our car <coughs> could, have been illegal, could have been legally cut down if detected by the tree warden aided by a licensed arborist. We do not have a professional arborist, arborist conducting periodic public safety assessments of Brantford's tree line highways as required by town statutes. Please note that the Brantford statute section 16-8 in order to make informed and knowledgeable decisions concerning public safety and the health of municipal trees, a licensed arborist shall be a part of the decision-making process for all the town trees. If the tree warden does not possess a current Connecticut arborist license, the town shall be required to contract the services of a Connecticut licensed arborist to work in consulting role with the town. But first, Brantford needs a qualified tree warden. State requirements in Connecticut Statute 23-59 require all towns to designate an official to assume the duties of, 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 the, of the tree warden. I have submitted a request an FOI request to determine whether 
Mr. Zelensky has completed the latter training. I have yet to receive a response. Uh, a query of the DEP has confirmed that Mr. Zelensky is not a Connecticut lar licensed arborist. It is well past time to provide the brand for people with a full-time arborist. And again, this is signed by Jerry Shaw. And I will. I have already submitted this to the town uh, to see the first selectman. The RTM does not uh, get involved in personnel matters. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Yes, um, I'd like to make a motion that we do send this letter to RNO along with a request to review Article 2 of Chapter 16 of the town code. That's the tree warden and public tree protection clause of that. I have, I'm familiar with this incident. I also have read the um, stipulations of, of Article 2 and feel that there are areas that are vague and, and should be. Uh, looked at again, uh, perhaps clarified um, after some investigation. So I would make a motion that we do send this to RNO for further discussion. I'll, uh, I'll second the appropriations change. Second motion. Yeah. Motion on the floor has been seconded to send this to uh, rules and ordinance. Uh, Could, well, we need it written up. <laughs> uh, actually, we don't need a motion. I, I have it we need my, a write up. I have it in my power to send it to RNO for you. I, we don't need a motion. If I want to send it to me, I'll just send it to the committee. Well, so I will, I will send. I, I will send this rules and ordinance. Just, uh, do I not include the with motion the in the minutes? Or yeah, yeah. Just, you don't have to. I just to say I was sent. Yeah. Right. Okay, we have one more piece of uh, correspondence, and this is from uh, Harry Smith, the town planner, and and it pertains to PA twenty one dash twenty nine accessory. Dwelling units, aka accessory or in law, in or in law apartments. Um, basically, in summarizing this, I'm, I'm going to send this to rules and ordinance also. And what it basically is is that the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission Act acted on PA 2129 requires that a public hearing be held by the Planning and Zoning Commission before and at least two thirds vote of the commission to opt out. The commission has held the public hearing and voted unanimously to opt out and forward the decision to the RTM for its review and hopefully concurrence. The RTM's action on this would be, the process would be also requires that at least two thirds vote of the municipality legislative body RTM to complete the opt out process. And again, I'm sending this to the rules and ordinance committee. Okay, may I see that one? That one for, thank you. I'll give it back to yeah. you. Yeah. And that's all I have. You have anything else? That the golf cart thing was is on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. As we previously talked about, we're going to move item thirteen up to, on the agenda. And. <clears throat> And number 13 has been moved up to, to consider an appropriate approve an appropriation from the ARPA fund in fiscal 2023 and approve the following resolution. Resolved that the RTM approves an increase in the ARPA fund budget from $2,232,002 to $2,327,000 in 2023. This fiscal 23 appropriation will be used to fund a subsidy to the Brantford Arts and Cultural Alliance and the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce and will be funded through an appropriation from the ARPA fund balance. Increased fund balance transfer, 95,000, and increased BACA, 70,000, and increased Shoreline Chamber of Commerce by 25,000. Representative Healy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Yes, the Ways and Means Committee met last Wednesday on the 5th to hear this item. Our committee was down a member, so there were only four of us. And yes, these two are being put together, although it'd be nice if they were separated. Um, we had three separate motions that evening. Neither, uh, neither one, any of them could get a second. So finally, there was a motion put upon the table to deny both of them. And that then hence passed. Two in favor, one against, with one abstention. And I put that in the form of motion this evening. Thank you. Your microphone. Move it closer to you. Oh, okay. Point of information. Sorry. 
Point of misinformation, Mr. Monitor, through you. I was under the impression, and I may be very, very wrong, that the motion that was voted on and approved with one, you know, the, the, the thing he said, <laughs> that to take no action. Is that, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I? Yeah. So, so the motion from the committee is to take no action, not to deny the request. No, it was to, no, it was to, to deny. It was to reject right. the right. word was to reject. Right. Okay. So, in our Could report, we? the rep representative Conklin. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I'll keep this brief. I would like to amend the motion of the committee, and my amendment would be to reinstate the seventy thousand for Baca and the twenty-five thousand for the Shoreline Chamber, uh, as presented and has passed by our Board of Finance. I'll second that motion. Seconded by Representative Ingraham. Any discussion on the amendment from members of the RTM? Representative Brooks. Um, I, I, think, I think we're rushing the gun a little bit. I, I think this needs to be re-referred. I, I don't want to vote no on his motion because I don't I don't want to say no to the funding. I you know I'm conflicted because while on one hand I see this as a positive uh, thing for the community and a positive thing for the town, I have questions that weren't answered at the Ways and Means Committee. Um, I, I received this email for, that went originally to the Board of Finance, but never came to the Ways and Means with the budget for BACA. And I have questions about that, and, and, and serious questions about that. And, and I don't know if in the subcommittee that, that all of the information that is really needed to make this kind of decision is there. I mean, I understand, I'm just taking BACA now, I'll leave the shoreline chamber for a second on the side, but you're talking about $70,000. It's not a small amount of money. And I know it's federal money, so it doesn't cost our taxpayers any money, but $70,000 for the town of Brantford, for whatever we use it for, can really make a difference. So it's not a, it's not a decision we just make without really getting into it. So that's one. Um, one of the things in that letter that was that was um, read at you know communications was, you know, it's already been proven to show economic growth. Okay, great. So let's see how that has happened, right? Let's see where that where that proof is, and I, I don't think that has been given yet. Um, you know, the other thing was, uh, in this budget that, that they gave the Board of Finance back in the spring, it says fundraising, 25000 But then we hear now that they've already raised $30,000. So does that mean that they're going to raise $45,000 this year? And then does, what happens to the difference in the budget that they, they sent to the Board of Finance? So, and, and I'm not, listen, I'm not questioning what anybody has done or, or any of that sort of thing. I just think we need to re-refer this, be very specific. If we need, you know, normally people come to us with all the information, but maybe, and, and I'll gladly reach out to Mr. Carano or anybody on the board and say, this is the information we're hoping to get so we can make a more informed decision. Because my guess is, and I, I, I don't know, there would have been more support had there been more information on the night of the Ways and Means. And, and my concern about taking a vote tonight on this motion is it could fail because of the lack of information. And if we take that vote tonight and it fails, that's it, we're done. We can't bring it, I guess we could say, I don't know, you'll know better than me, 69,000 
$999. That's a different motion. But, you know, I, I just think yep. let's slow our roll. We'll be okay if we wait, go back to Ways and Means, and, and request the information that, that I think Ways and Means want. I'll help spearhead that, and then we can have a better, more knowledgeable vote. I mean, this feels like to me a lot like the Blackstone Library. It's its own entity, and they we help them, right? Somebody, I, I, you know. Anyway, order. Uh, just, yeah, just I you know, if we're going to do this, you should be making a motion to re-refer, and I don't know if you've so done moved. it, uh, yeah, to amend. <laughs> to amend I'm going to amend his motion. motion. To and then we'll go back to that if, if that's what you okay, want to do. I apologize. Um, and, and if you have a second, that's great, and then I'll you can you. continue to speak. Okay, so you have a, a motion. Okay. I'll make the motion to re refer. Which is amending the amendment. Which is amending his yeah. amendment. Correct. And everything I just said. All right. And is there a second on that? Yes. Yeah. Representative Amori, any discussion on uh, amending? Uh, on the, re on the amending? Representative Collins. Conklin's motion to approve. Representative Henschel? Yes, uh, Mr. Moderator, through you, I'd like to ask the uh, first selectman, what are the consequences if we do delay this uh, cycle here? Is there any urgency to get this thing passed tonight? Um, I, I would think that's really a question for the Baca board uh, in terms of the urgency. I will just to the point of more time and this was first requested back in to the town in May when the presentation was done in May regarding this item um, a follow-up presentation was done a little over a month ago at the Board of Finance meeting uh, a presentation was done at the committee meeting of the RTM so I guess, you know, in terms of time, I mean, I don't know, is there, what would more time provide? I think we also have to see what is before us and what it, we're actually considering here. Well, BACA is an organization that was established seven years ago, I believe, maybe a little over. Um, it is a volunteer organization that has uh, held many events, uh, programs over that period of time. However, what has changed was a, a little over a year ago where they established this gallery on the gr green. Where I agree a lot of it, there isn't quantifiable data right now in terms of the true impact However, I think there's significant uh, testimony, anecdotal data that supports and validates the statements that were made uh, in terms of the impact it has on the community. This is, as I said, although it was an entity that was created over seven years ago, um, it is, uh, we have to think of this in the past year as it is truly a startup in terms of what it is bringing to our community. And I think we have to ask, what are we? We're utilizing these dollars and we want to deploy these dollars in a way that they have a, an impact, a positive impact on our community. And over the years, you know, uh, through various boards and commissions of the town, through uh, public engagement, uh, there's been a, a, an acknowledgement or, uh, that we need to support uh, the downtown, the center area, to ensure that there's, uh, it's vibrant, that there's a business community there, support it. Uh, we need to draw beyond our Brantford borders to bring people into town to support the businesses here. We need to, we, and how do we do this in this challenging time when there's a, forget, you know, we're not even just talking about the pandemic and the impact that that had on the community, but really in the, the change in what we're seeing in, in retail and the industry that exists. 
We need to become a destination. We need to be a place that attracts people. People want to come and have an experience when they come uh, to a, a t town or to, to whether it's to go to a restaurant to shop or to go to a gallery. Um, so that's what the investment is. I mean, the ba in the past, this, this body has approved to, um, funding to try to implement a trolley to bring people from the marinas into the, the center and to support other areas of you know, town, the business community. We heard testimony from a business owner, probably one of the, one, the, the longest uh, tenants or business owners, uh, uh, one has the longest history on the main street, who provided testimony at the Board of Finance that this is the first time that in the many years of being in business that they're seeing that Brantford is becoming that draw. It's bringing people up from the, uh, yes. the marinas into the center. To me, that's strong testimony. It's from a credible source. You also heard testimony from an artist who discussed and presented the impact it's having on the artist community. Not only as a place to display and, and sell their art to support those who are in the in the the artist, but also that this is probably the largest gallery that sits on the shoreline. Not only making it unique, but creating getting a reputation or a, a, an awareness that extends far beyond Bramford. Once again, continue to be that draw. So I think we have to ask: How do we want to deploy these dollars? What are we trying to accomplish? And I think supporting not only Baca, the organization, and the gallery, but it's also supporting the, the community beyond just that organization. And I think it is uh, something, and again, keep in mind, this is an appropriation that's an a one-time appropriation. I think give them time to come back when they have to, if there's another request, and to, to provide additional information to show and to gather that information. It's a startup. They're gonna to continue to build and I think, and, and support um, to show how they've been you know, broadening their, their sources of revenue and their success that they have been doing. And I think they're gonna only be successful if they can show that the community is behind this first. I think that will help them be successful in getting grants. That will be help them be successful in uh, uh, getting sponsorships and donations. And more importantly, that'll be help them be successful in being a, a, a destination in terms of attracting people to come there and support not only the gallery, but the other businesses that are in the green. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to say, I'm, I'm, is this yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to see this appropriation and appropriation made. I'm also hoping for a re-referral. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about VACA to the degree that not only do I want the town to give you money this year, I'd like to see them give you, guarantee you money for three years. I would, but here's why. Here's why. I think First Selectly is correct. I think we need to demonstrate that the town is behind this for lots of different reasons. I've spent a lifetime in managing nonprofits, and I manage an arts organization, a nonprofit avant-garde dance theater company, try fundraising for that. Um, so I know a little bit about fundraising for the arts. Okay? Um, I also know that if a, a truly committed funder wants an organization to succeed, they will give them a guaranteed base for a period of time to let those things happen over time. If you have something to draw on and say to other funders, we have a three-year growth and development period, and we can 
draw in our resources, we can attract more of our artists, we can give you more information about sales. And um, while I understand that art is a great draw for this town, it is part of economic development, it should also exist for its own accord, for its own validity. Art is valid on its own without being part of economic development. It also does help economic development, okay? So, why I'm hoping that you will take another month and think about this and renegotiate and ask for continued guaranteed funding is because when I looked at the budget, and I have to say, I don't know where the breakdown was, I just saw it tonight, 15 minutes ago. As a nonprofit director and having to make reports year after year after year up to funders, I would never have gone to a funder with a negative balance, ever. So I think some degree of reflection by your board on your funder base, on contacting, on how are you going to match. You have a huge amount of money that you're paying for rent. I just saw this tonight. I have no analysis of your budget beyond looking at a few of the nuts and bolts. It's 40% of your budget. I think you need to reconfig I think you need to find out how you can, if you want to stay where you are, how can you support that on an ongoing basis? And I speak from experience. When I, I was the director of this um, uh, avant-garde dance theater company, we lucked into a Polish, a closed down Polish social club. It had a ballroom and a stage and everything. It was perfect for a dance company. And we, we, we managed to pay the rent for two years. Couldn't pay it the third year. And we had to move out and close down. So I want to see you survive so badly that I want you to really reconsider how you present these numbers and what you do to sustain yourself and what you take from to the town to say, help us, give us a base for three years so that we can grow. That's my two cents. Uh, Mr. Moderator, thank you. I'm, I'm rising um, against uh, re-referring the item. We do have a large number of people that uh, came out tonight and uh, are knowledgeable that later on if they, they need to give some testimony. Uh, we have a, a one-year allocation in front of us. If we re-referred this, it would be going back for the same exact thing, the one-year uh, uh, ask. Um, so let's vote on this tonight. And I urge you to vote no to the re-refer. Um, uh, Representative Hancho. And then Mr. Riccio. Representative Riccio after that. I'll defer to Mr. Riccio first. Representative Riccio, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ask the mic, the mic. Uh, Ask the mic, please. So can I talk about the overall, uh, it's $7,000 for mm -hmm. just re okay. The next, the next, the next the week, if that fails. After. It's the better spot for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll yeah. wait until. But, but I will I will make it a comment about the re-refer. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. When I walked into this room tonight, I uh, said to my colleagues here, I wish we could uh, re refer this tonight. So I had more time to think about this proposal and research the proposal. I apologize in advance that uh, it's my fault, I'm responsible. I'm just not 100% up to speed on what you're trying to do. It's not your fault, it's no one's fault in this room, but it's my fault, okay? <clears throat> but I am a quick learn and I learned a lot during the caucus, pros and cons, and there are pros. There's also some cons regarding this proposal. I think we should vote on it tonight. I think we should turn down the re-referral and uh, make a decision tonight. It's only $70,000. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Maybe tonight. We're, we're going to approve. I think I saw a hundred and forty thousand dollar transfer tonight. Okay. Ninety-five. Ninety-five. No, 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 no. On another line, on item, line item number nine. We're gonna. I think we're gonna uh, vote on a hundred and forty thousand dollar transfer. Okay. Yeah, we do this all the time. Um, but I think we should get this done. These people came out tonight. But I will give you all a lecture. When Feed Bramper Kids comes to this body and asks for money, you better all be here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Representative Henschel? <laughs> yes, through you, Mr. Moderator. I Partly as a procedural thing, because I don't believe we can hear from the public on this particular vote. I don't know if we refer, but I would like then to ask Mr. Carano. If, I've, I've looked, and again, I've seen this budget for the first time tonight, and I do agree with Mary Ann that I, I would like to see Baca funded with a, uh, a known funding from the town on an annual basis, but I don't believe the ARPA funds can be used in quite that way. So I would like to hear. Um, since there is no reference in this budget to how the ARP, this ARPA funding might be used, whether you could just give us a quick idea of how Baca is looking at the use of the seventy thousand dollars, if it is voted. I think it's important to know this before we. Can we keep that to the main when we yeah, yeah, saw the, yeah. the re-referral. Well, I'm concerned that if we vote to re-refer well, it, just, you won't have heard that information. Well, if, so, if, if, re -referral pass, if, if point of information, Mr. Moderator, if, if it's re-referred, you'll have a month to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if, if something changes, just to add to the point of information, if, if part of the change was to change what it was asked for, it would have to go back to the Board of Finance. I don't think you should change well, if it would I'm, increase, yeah. And, yeah. Sure. Oh, on the contrary, though, if we if we vote on it tonight and it's denied, then we haven't yeah. uh, had that opportunity to refer it for yeah. more information. So, sort of catch twenty two. So, yeah. So, just uh, just for uh, my my clarification, Representative Brooks, uh, are, are you talking about the total the Shoreline Chamber one also, or just the Baca? I can't not talk about it as a whole. Because it is a whole, so yes, I'm talking about re referring talking as about a whole. The whole thing. The whole Correct. Thing. All right. Okay. Anyone else from the RTM wishing to speak to the amendment? Mr. Carano, would you like to speak to this? No. The public yeah, can't so speak. We well, the procedure, the procedure is to for the motion is re refer. Right. Get up. Right. Right. All right. So. The motion on the floor is to re-refer this, this this item, okay? All those in favor? Well, why don't you make sure everyone understands the yes vote means we're going to re-refer it. Right. A yes vote is to re-refer this item. A no vote is not to refer this item, okay? So I have a, I have a show of hands, so Representative uh, Tuho? Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to request a uh, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. I love you. <laughs> I think I'm always ready. I, okay. I was ready. This will be a roll call vote. A yes is your four is for the item the amendment to re-refer. A no vote is against. Okay. So to clarify, a yes is to vote in favor of re-referring. I believe that the motion is to amend, so we still have to vote on the amended motion. Yeah, you'll have to do it again. We have to do everything, everything twice. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So the motion is to re refer the item. A yes vote means you're in favor of re referring, a no vote means you're not. Yeah, right. Technically, the motion is to amend the amendment to yeah. the motion, and then we'd still have to give it back. <laughs> so, but. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's take a roll call. Anybody play the Keystone Cops? Can I be recognized? Yes. Uh, I mean, I wasn't going to, but since this discussion's going on so long, I just want I believe before you is to, right before, just to simplify it, you're voting on to re refer yeah. the item. Right. It's based off, you still have an amendment to vote for after that. 
I just want to address a statement. If the, the, I guess the reason or the just for the re-referral is to then consider a multi-year um, uh, commitment, Ray, uh, Representative Ingraham is correct. You would have to then go back, change our process. The Board of Finance and the RTM process is not doing multi-year commitments. We've stated the process would be an annual fund. So that's, I just wanted to address the fact, yeah. mm -hmm. if it was to re-refer to then seek a multi-year commitment from the town, it would that have to change the process. Yeah, I'm just wanted to clarify. Representative Brooks. I just want to respond to that. Um, and I, I want this body to understand why I want to re-refer it. I want to re-refer it because I think I don't, I want to re-refer it because I think that 80% of this body wants to approve this 70,000, but I think 60% of this body is not ready to do that. And if we don't re-refer it, then this dies here tonight. It's 140 percent. <laughs> All right, are we ready to vote just on the budget? Right? Just saying. Okay, this will be a roll call vote. All right, this is just for the amendments. Let's go with the. This is the re referral. If this passes, we have to vote again. Let's go. Right. It's just the amendments. If this fails, you go back to the main. Yeah, the, the first amendment. Correct. Correct. Everybody understand that? If this fails, we go back to the other amendment to approve. I know. I'm well aware. All right. I can find for the other. Please vote no. Can we vote? Are we ready? Yes. Okay. The motion made by Representative Brooks is to re-refer item 13 in its entirety. A yes vote means you're in favor of re-referring. A no vote means you are not. Do I have that right? Yes. yes. Okay. No. Representative, oh, Representative no, Alphone. No. Representative Amore. Yes. Representative Anderson. No. Representative Barron. Yes. Representative Black. No. Representative Bonnenberger. No. Representative Brooks. Yes. Representative Conklin. No. Representative Everson. Yes. Uh, absent. Um, Representative Greenberg. No. Representative Healy? No. Representative Henschel? No. Representative Hines is absent? No, he's not. No, he's not. Hines no. 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 Okay. Thank you. Representative Ingraham? No. <clears throat> Representative Kelly? No. Representative Leach is no. Representative Maresca? No. Representative Preet? No. Representative Riccio? No. Representative Shrestha? Yes. Representative Sires? Representative Stepanek? No. Representative Sullivan? No. Representative um, Tuhill? No. Representative Verderam? No. Representative Wachowski? No. Sometimes it just happens. And Representative Wells came in, correct? Yeah, I'm here and I vote no. Okay. Okay, the no's have it. Um, I have to count this up. Make sure 21 I have to right five one. to 1. 
What was that, Mr. 21, 21 to 5 to 1. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, yes. Yeah, no, motion has been defeated. We're back to the other amendment from Representative Brown. before the math earlier. To approve the, this transfer. <laughs> Is there any further discussion from members of the RTM on Representative Conklin's motion? Amendment. Amendment. Representative Tuhill. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I just wanted to um, speak on behalf of the arts organization. They're a very <coughs> fine uh, organization. They've done a terrific job. They've really helped downtown Brantford. We have the new Archie Moores, which is doing very well. Uh, there's a lot of attention on downtown Brantford to see how it's doing. I mean, we're just coming out of COVID, and uh, this is really spurring you know, the, the economics of downtown Brantford. We can't quantify how many people uh, this organization brings into town. We aren't sure how much they spend. Uh, but I mean, the streets are, especially on weekends, are crowded. Uh, the Brantford Green is always crowded. We have the new tables and the umbrellas and everything. It's really a great place to be. And part of the success is due to Baca. Um, Now, just so the public understands this, I mean, we did receive um, $8,257,000 from the U.S. government, the American Rescue Plan, which is to help us come out of COVID, you know? And this is an, this is an, an appropriate way to spend the, the money. So if we spend what they're requesting, $70,000, we still have left um, $5.4 million. We, we can still, we still have that on hand to spend on, you know, on other things that, that, that you know, that are gonna help the town of Brantford and the people of Brantford. Um, part of the issue, part of the problem that they've run into, I think is the rent. The rent is now, it, it, the rent was free, I think for the first six months or even at the first year. And the, anyway, the owner has begun charging them rent now on the gallery, $5,800 a month. And possibly they can ask the owner to, uh, you know, possibly reduce the rent or even, even to reduce the space. Um, but I think that this is good for downtown Brantford, good for the residents of Brantford, good for the arts in town. Now the approval would show that the town cares about culture and the arts. And um, uh, I just wanted to say, I mean, you're right, it's a lot to spend, but keep in mind the town pays the Blackstone $31,000 a week. And um, so I would urge you all to vote for this appropriation for the Brantford Arts Council Alliance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I just wrote down a few comments um, because I fully support this and thank you for your comments and also thank you for helping me with my math. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, I, I just want to read the few little general comments that I wrote, but I believe that um, if we show support of this project, we demonstrate Bramford's progressive philosophy with emphasis on the importance of arts and education. I think it's important for the young people in the town to realize that our community values art in all kinds of art and that they are also invited to participate. Baca brings foot traffic, like Representative Tuhill stated, um, to our town, which is so important to have a vibrant and active community. So I fully support this idea. Thank you for putting this together. Anyone else from the RTM wishing to speak to this? Representative? Uh, All right. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Mark. We can. Yeah. He mumbled it, but yeah. He's Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, so let me now finish what I was going to say earlier. Um, 
as I mentioned, I, when I walked in here tonight, and after hearing what we were going to vote on, I said, I'm going to do this. Um, and the reasons I said that was because I said that to myself, you know, when, when, you know where does this end? You know, as, as my colleagues across the aisle know, and my colleagues on this side of the aisle know, uh, I'm pretty stingy when it comes to spending money here in the town of Brantford. That's my, my reputation. Um, I'm concerned, so, so there's, there's, I have concerns, but, but there's also some positive out of this, out of this thing. Um, I'm concerned that other nonprofit organizations are going to come to us and ask for money. So that is a concern. And I asked my colleagues during caucus, why wouldn't the Brantford Yacht Club or the Pine Orchard uh, Club come, come to us and ask for our money? I don't know if they're a nonprofit or not. Okay. All right. But there's other there's other organizations that are also nonprofit, like um, a Feed the Kids program. I'm sure that's a nonprofit organization. So, I mean, I, some of these things are good, but I'm just concerned that we're going to start a precedent, and I think we need to be aware of that in case that happens. Um, I'm concerned about you folks have not raised enough money. It sounds like you're trying to raise money. And we had uh, people raise a million dollars for the animal shelter. So, you know, I think uh, you guys need to put, uh, put a bigger effort in to raising more money for your, uh, for this association. Um, I would personally like to see a, a plan. You're, you're coming to us and asking for seventy thousand dollars. I would like to see a plan, but that's not going to happen tonight. I'd like to know how you're going to use the money. Um, you know, you know, what, what are some of your short and long-term goals? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, are you willing to pay the seventy thousand dollars back over time? Okay. I mean, I mean, these are questions. As a business person, I'm gonna, I would ask if someone came to me and said, you know, I, I want, I want money. So, and, and these feelings, I think, are felt by many of us uh, that you know we just have a lot of unanswered questions. Um, but the good part is, seventy thousand uh, dollars. You know, we don't know how much that's going to generate in tax revenue. We just don't know. And we, do, we also don't know, um, we also don't know, you know, how much it's going to attract people to Brantford. Obviously, you know, we've, we've got, you folks have had some uh, success with this. Uh, I like the fact that it's a one-shot deal, but let's see if they come back two years from now, three years. I bet you they do. Okay. Um, I like the fact of being paid by ARPA or being funded by ARPA. And you know, one of our goals in the administrative uh, the administration's goal has been to make the town of Brantford more attractive so people do come to Brantford. And you are accomplishing that. So good job. But the also thing, the other thing I like about this is you've got some good people behind. Got Robin Sandler, I see Mary Grandy way in the back. I don't know all of you. So I'm going to vote for this tonight. And even though there's you know, some pros and you know, someone's laughing way in the back, but I, I am going to support this. I think it's, it's got some uh, uh, positive things. And let's see how you guys do. So I wish you success and uh, good luck with it. <laughs> Representative Henschel. Thank you. I'm going to vote uh, yes, of course, for this. I think it's a terrific use of the ARPA funds. I, I support wholeheartedly the, the uh, goals of BACA. I think it's a, a critical to have an organization like yours in our community. And I, I know that uh, having metrics of the value of the community is somewhat indeterminate, but I think everybody in their heart knows that it's it's a terrific value to have you. The one 
thing I would hope you would do. I mean, I'm, again, I'm looking at your budget and I see the, uh, the fact that you're pro projecting a deficit on, in each year. And I hope that when you receive the $70,000 that you don't look at it as a way of closing that budget, but rather you look specifically at how you can use those funds to make the organization um, sustainable in the long range, putting it specifically to uses that will, that may be not in your, your kit of tools right now, but will help you to not have to look at a, a budget deficit year after year after year uh, and sort of keep it in reserve for that purpose and not, not just to fund a deficit. Thank you. Okay, Rep Representative Sapanik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, like many of you, I didn't know very much about uh, Baca until tonight. I'm in favor of it. I think it's a great program. It's not going to cause inflation. It's not going to raise uh, fuel taxes. So uh, that's, that's a real plus. One of the few things that does. Uh, but I, uh, it, tonight we're not going to redress the lack of information. Uh, that's too bad. I, I did want to know more. But I, 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 what I know already is, is very positive. Um, maybe we could just take a second this evening. Uh, uh, Mark mentioned the good people who are on the board. Could they rise? Is that asking too much? And just uh, I don't even know who they are. Thank you. Representative Amore. I will support this vote. Um, I, I want you to have more money, but I want you to be around for a long time. So I, uh, while I'm going to support, I'm going to vote for this tonight, I hope it's not presumptuous of me, but I hope you've had some good advice here tonight. I hope you'll take it seriously. So thank you. Anybody else from the RTM wishing to speak to this? Uh, Representative Brooks? A procedural thing. Can I call a short recess? What's the you procedure? Could, you could do that, sure. Yeah. Is that allowed? You want a recess? Motion to recess. Yes, I want a recess. Okay. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll give Four you hours? Uh, we'll give you a 10 minute <laughs> recess, Representative Brooks. It's <laughs> 9 o'clock. We'll be back at 9 10. I'm not very good with watches, so good luck with that. Okay, uh, everybody please take their seats. Call the meeting back to order. I'd like to call the meeting back to order at 9.10. Nice. Representative Brooks, you're on the money with that one. So. All right. We're back to the amended motion to approve the transfer as uh, uh, Well, it's but, the amendment. But, yeah, moderate. Right. It's the amendment. Amended. But before we do that, uh, Mr. Carano, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Frank Carano. I live at 90 Quarry Dock Road here in Brantford. Mighty and I'm the president of the Brantford Arts and Cultural Alliance. And I welcome the opportunity to uh, speak briefly before the vote. And what I would like to do is to respond to some of the issues that I've heard raised tonight. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there's, there's very little opportunity for real dialogue uh, between the RTM and someone such as myself who represents an organization who is coming before you with a request. And uh, so, you know, before I came here tonight, I asked myself four questions. And I thought, well, maybe these are questions that members of the RTM would want to have answered. And the first question I asked was, is this an appropriate use for the ARC funds? And in the research that I did, and in the uh, conversations that we had with Jim Finch, who was the town finance director, and the Board of Finance, 
uh, we were led to believe that the funds are being drawn not from any set aside for nonprofits, but that the funds are being drawn from monies that would be used appropriately for economic development. And so I believe that the, that the $70,000 allocation coming from those funds is very appropriately designated to BACA because we are and have been and hope to continue to be an economic driver for downtown Brantford, for the center of Brantford. I think we have shown that. I think we, the proof is in the statement that was signed by 22 downtown businesses. Some people are here in the room tonight representing those businesses. And what did they say when they signed the document? They said, we support the continuation of the gallery at 1004 Main Street in Brantford. And the reason they signed it, I went down to every single store last Friday and I just asked them, I said, are you willing to sign this? Everyone said yes immediately. I did not have to twist anyone's arm. I didn't have to beg anybody. I didn't have to give them any reason to sign it. They understood why they should sign it. So I felt, I felt that that validated what we have been doing and it validates what we hope to do, to continue to do and to improve doing if we get the funds. So the second question was, what about those budget deficits? So I would ask questions about the, bu the budget deficits too, because nobody likes to see a deficit in a budget. So maybe, you know, maybe we were overly cautious when we, when we projected uh, the budgets for the next three years. We have already outreached our goal for fundraising for this year. So we have a reserve that can pay our rent through April. And that reserve comes from fundraising, contributions. We did, a, we did a capital campaign soliciting funds directly from members and from the community. And we had a very generous contribution from the Vigliotti family. So we already have overreached our goal for this year. And so there is no reason to think that if we were able to accomplish that, under the difficult circumstances that we're all facing financially, um, that we should be able to continue to do that. So the third question then I asked, so what will we do with the money? Because a lot of you want to know, what would we do with the funds? We didn't give you a budget, you know, to explain to you exactly how we would use the 70,000. Well, we didn't, we didn't have a budget because we don't have the money. So we didn't have um, a specific, uh, outlay of the funds, but we know that the money will be used not to pay the rent. We're not asking you to pay our rent, but we want to use the money to do strategic planning that will better position us to continue to be successful, to grow and develop as, an, an, as a business entity. We have never run a business. We are a nonprofit arts organization. But now we're running a business. And so we have to learn how to do that. And we have to be able to expand our skills. We need to reach out to a wider audience. We have to do better marketing. We have to be able to make sure that people know how to access the gallery, be it online, be it in person, however that needs to happen. So the money that you allocate to us, if you vote in favor of this motion, is going to help us do that. It's going to help us become more self-sufficient. So it's not that we're asking for a handout to pay our bills. We're paying our bills. We don't need money to pay our bills, but we do need money to help us do a better job for the next year and the year after that. And there was a fourth question. So the fourth question is, so what good does this do for Brantford? So if you allocate $70,000 to us from federal money, which is coming into Brantford for economic development, and we are in fact an economic development driver, what benefit would Brantford receive from that? I think the benefit would be something that each and every person 
who lives in Brantford will derive something from. The benefit will be that we will continue to help the center of Brantford grow and prosper. The benefit will be that the citizens of Brantford will be continue to be able to enjoy and appreciate the arts as they have been for the last eight years. And by the way, for eight years that we have been in existence, we have never asked the town of Brantford for any money whatsoever, not one dollar. Everything we've done, we have done on our own as volunteers and as a nonprofit organization. So it's my belief that if you vote in favor of this motion, you're voting for Brantford's future at many levels. You're, vo you're, you're voting for Brantford's economic future. You're voting for Brantford's future as a community to live in where the quality of life is elevated and where people enjoy coming downtown because they have a beautiful place to visit. A lot of the people who come to the gallery don't come to buy art. Some of them can't afford to buy the art. They come to the gallery to be in a place that's beautiful. And the beauty in the gallery helps elevate their lives. And they feel better when they walk out. Everyone who leaves the gallery tells us how beautiful it is and how lucky they are to have it in their town. So my appeal to you is to vote in favor of this because we're all gonna benefit from it. You know, I've, at, I've been asked by people, are you gonna come back next year or the year after or every year from now on asking for money? So, you know, we're asking for federal money, we're not asking for town money, and I hope we don't have to come back and ask for money. That's not our plan, that's not our goal, but what you do tonight will help mitigate the need for us to come back in the future because we're gonna use the money in a very productive way. So that's all I have to say. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. <clears throat> Representative Black. <laughs> For you, Mr. Moderator, just some comments. Frank, I, I mean, I wish I'd heard that presentation last <laughs> Wednesday night. Because the, the impression, yeah. and, and you know, some of us did prepare. We went you didn't to ask me. <laughs> we reviewed what you were submitting so and listened to the Board of Finance. Um, Absolutely. You know, I wasn't there. I was injured. But, you know, we watched it on tape, and, and I know all the the ways and means. And, you know, what was really disturbing was those projections. And there were comments made by the Board of Finance that, you know, you were just going to be a money-losing operation forever. And, you know, I heard mm -hmm. that you'd signed a lease in April. And, you know, it, it sure looked like that 70000 matched up pretty well with the cost of the rent. What you were coming to us saying was, you know, we, we've got more expenses because now we have to pay rent. And I understand where your landlord's coming from, to be sure. You know, he's like, the economy's picking up. I got to get something for this. Um, but, you know, I wish I'd heard that before. And I hope you do use this for a strategic plan. I mean, I would have, you know, to for some long range planning, just rather than what it looked at from the documents from Jim Finch, and frankly, you know, from the documents that were submitted and you know, me listening to you, maybe I wasn't listening closely enough, was that, uh, you know, this was likely to be an ongoing subsidy and, you know, it was 70,000 this year, you know, what happens when the ARPA money's not there? Because I, I do want to see the ARPA money used for, you know, nonprofits that have, you know, maybe not been able to hold fundraisers, whether it's the Blackstone or, you know, the, the Stony Creek Fife and Drum Fort, you know, mentioned that Joe Mooney brought that one up to me. But, you know, I, I think we should, there is a nonprofit segment, um, but, you know, this is kind of seed money. And if you are using that way, it makes me a lot warmer and fuzzier. And, probably abstain just to make some consistency here instead of a, a no but and I, I think this is going to vote pass anyway so if people seem to be rushed but that you make me a lot warmer and fuzzier feeling inside <laughs> after that <laughs> thank you <laughs> that's big there I'll tell you. all right Thanks, Thank you, Frank. He's warm and fuzzy.
Wow. So uh, <laughs> before we vote, uh, before we vote, uh, I'm assuming in, in the majority, the people in the audience are in favor of it. It's something we haven't heard before. Uh, there was, is there anybody else wishing to speak to this? If not, the RCM will vote on this. Uh, again, we are voting on the amendment that Representative Conklin put forth to approve this transfer for, for a total of 95,000, 70,000 for BACA and 25,000 for the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce. A yes vote, you're in favor of it. A no vote, you are against. Okay. Representative Tuhill, are you ready to do the math? Yeah. Somebody. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Go right ahead. It have to be a Thank roll call you. Vote. Yes, and it'll be, this will be a roll call vote. It doesn't vote. have to be. Yeah? Nobody called for a roll call vote. No. I did. What? I did. Oh, you just did? Yeah. You didn't say it. I said roll call. I just said to the clerk. I was ready. You got to listen, uh, Representative Brooks. Just <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be very quick. Representative Alphone. Yes. Yeah. Representative Amore. Yes. Representative Anderson. Yes. Representative Barron. Yes. Representative Black. Abstain. He abstains. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, Representative Bonnenberger. Yes. Representative Brooks. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Conklin. Yes. Representative Everson. Yes. Representative um, Greenberg. Representative Greenberg. Still on break. You still on <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here she is. She's back. She said yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, Representative Healy. Yes. Representative Henschel? Yes. Representative Hines? Yeah, yes. Yes. Thank you. Representative Ingraham? Yes. Representative Kelly? Yes. Representative Leach is yes. Representative Maresca? Yes. Representative Preet? Yes. Representative Riccio? Yes. Representative Shrestha? Yes. Representative Sires? Yes. Representative Stepanik? Yes. Representative Sullivan? Yes. Representative Tuhill? Yes. Representative Verderam? Yes. Representative Wachowski? Yes. Representative Wells? Yes. Okay, so it's unanimous. Oh, oh no, one abstention, sorry. sorry. Okay, that's on the amendment. Can we do a voice vote on the second one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Please? So, <laughs> so one abstention and 28, yes. We had to do it twice. Abstention. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, that's wrong. Yeah. That's um, because we have some absences. So 26. Yes. That was the amendment. Now we have to do the main motion. All right. The transfer carries. So for a point of information, uh, the vote was 26. Yes, one abstention. Town clerk, can you hear me okay now? Okay, all right. Dennis, we have to vote. The underlying motion. We have to vote. The motion has amended. The motion has amended. I know. Okay. Now we're going to be voting. Now we're going to vote as a motion as amended. A yes vote. We don't We don't need a roll call on this. Thank you. All right. If this will be a yes vote is in favor. A no vote, you're against. All those in favor, signify by saying yes. Aye. Aye. Any no votes? Still abstentions. Right. <laughs> Representative Black, no? Okay. <laughs> now it's unanimous. All right. We got that out of the way. Now you can. <laughs> now thank you, thank you. So now it's unanimous. Yes. <laughs> now it's unanimous. All right, let's move on. I stop drinking for this. Now you get to spend the whole time saying the new item number. Yeah, new item number five. <laughs> the second one. Yeah, well, wait, uh, well, Representative Selva may say we have to. Uh, Do we need to call for recess? I 
a recess. Yeah, I am. Just to allow the room to clear. The meeting's still live. What? Yeah. You're still live. Yeah, I know. All right. You ready? So what we're doing is you, you, you say about I'm changing the numbers. numbers yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're this will be a new item five, which will be to cons uh, to consider an appropriate adopt an ordinance for golf carts for the town of Rampart. You're not on. Yeah. Your mic. microphone isn't. Can I? Yeah. Did, again. Did you hear me? Yeah. All right. This will be a new item five to consider and, if appropriate, adopt an ordinance with golf carts for the town of Brampton. Representative Black. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Ways and Means uh, could not get a quorum this past month. However, we did. Uh, get a RNO, RNO, sorry, RNO. Um, it's late, but not that late. But anyway, um, we did get a uh, opinion from the town attorney saying that the RTM had no jurisdiction over this matter; that it's specifically delegated by statute to the town traffic commission, which is in our case the police commission. In fact. They acted on this last night, uh, so I'll make a motion to uh, take no action on this item and remove it from the agenda and look for a second for that. Second. Second by Representative Sullivan. Any discussion on the motion to take no action on this item? Representative Sullivan. Uh, I just wanted to point out that Representative Ingraham uh, introduced this and he took a good time to leave the meeting briefly. <laughs> <laughs> he recused himself. <laughs> Any discussion on this item? Uh, to take no action? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The item is removed. Removed. Uh, Representative Ingram is now back. Oh, that. He, recused, <laughs> he recused himself from this. <laughs> <laughs> no, he excused himself. <laughs> he did not recuse. Okay, new item, new item number six to consider and if appropriate approval or recommendation for the Board of Finance that the RTM evaluate the request to fund the position of register of voters on a full time basis beginning January 1, 2023, for each year in their two year term of office at the rate of pay recommended by the Human Resources Department and approved by the RTM. This recommendation will be made pursuant to an analysis of the department's operations and staffing requirements. Representative Verderam. Uh Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The item before us tonight is to fund our Registrar of Voters position at $31,000 each, which was decided upon uh, by our Director of Human Resources. This is up nearly 19% from the current salary of $26,000. Uh, Mr. Moderator, like I said, this number was decided on after an examination from our Human Resources Director and after presentations from our registrars and research from both our Human Resources Director and members of our committee, which they found that the salary amount is in the mid to upper salary range of towns with similar voting populations to Brantford. So we are right in the range. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Moderator, this item passed the committee with a unanimous vote, and I move its favorable passage. Okay, my motion on the floor to approve this item. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Representative Brooks. I'm not sure how to do this. So somebody that's smarter than me or knows better than me is going to help me do this. I would like to amend that motion. And I, I would like to amend that motion to say that we agree to revisit this very issue after the elections and after the early voting uh, decision is yay or nay. And I say this because there's a myriad of reasons. I don't think, I don't think we're funding it enough. B, if early voting goes through, we are going to 
we are going to add on more of a workload to the registrar of voters. You know, the state will add on more of a workload to the registrar of voters. So therefore, higher demand. So more responsibility equals, you know, more pay, right? Isn't that how it works? Um, so, but our normal practice as a, as a town and as a body is that you don't visit this in an election year because that person could then no longer be there. So, and I, again, you're shaking your head, so you're going to help me with this. I would like to, a, a the amendment to say that we will revisit it even though it goes against our normal practices. I'm not saying we're going to change. I'm not amending it to change it. I just want to amend it that we will revisit it post-election. And I, I would say one more thing. Well, yes, putting it at 31,000 puts us in the, um, the right in the average salary, but for 2023, we would be on the lower end, and I would gladly share that information with anyone that wants to. But to just give you a quick reading, 36,000, 39,000, 31, point five, twenty nine point four, forty point six, twenty four point five, forty eight point three, thirty two, twenty six, thirty five. So you can see that we're actually getting to the lower end come next year. Another reason to revisit. So correct me, Mr. Black, who knows a lot more, Representative Black. Is there a second on this? What's the motion? <coughs> oh. Oh, May I ask what the motion is? <laughs> the, motion the motion is to amend the committee report that we would approve this number tonight with the understanding that we are going to revisit it post-election and the decision on early voting. Okay. <clears throat> is there a second? Second. Who seconded it? Representative Barron? Any yeah. discussion? Representative, go ahead, thank you. Uh, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Moderator, <coughs> Mr. Moderator uh, through, through you uh, to Representative Brooks. So your amendment is all based on the, if the, uh, this vote on uh, early uh, voting is, is passed by the citizens of <coughs> Connecticut, would you consider amending your amendment? And if it's not passed, we reduce the amount. If you would, point of order, Mr. Moderator, if you would understand my motion, I didn't say that we would revisit it and increase it. I said that we would just revisit it. That means that, that revisit, it doesn't mean anything other than have the discussion because normal practice is to not have that discussion. And I'm asking that we have that discussion. That's all I'm asking. Mr. Uh, let's see. Representative Black, you want to yeah, say? Sure. Wait, please. Sir. Yeah, um, I guess I'm going to oppose this motion because I don't think that we should. Uh, really, we're just here to act on the, the salary first first off, um, but you know, I'm sure if that passes, we'll hear from the registrars again. It'll also be part of the normal budget process in terms of requests. It's gonna have a statewide um, effect. I mean, actually I got an email from our Secretary of State candidate talking about the need, you know, if, if that passes, that you have a lot of part-time um, registrars move to, uh, Full time, um, so I think I think we can. This will be part of the regular budget prep uh, part. And as far as this is an election year, we generally set the, the salary before an election. But if there's a major change in the duties, I think that'll happen, and you know that'll come through the regular budget process from the first selectmen's 
office, and I, I'm sure the registrars will be kicking it. They were already asking for a raise when it hasn't passed yet, and it'll. So, I urge everybody to vote no on this. Thank you. Representative Ringerham. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, also, uh, more information. If once it goes through the ballot process, it still has to go through the Connecticut legislature to be passed and, and laid out on how it how it would actually work. And as uh, Representative Black had pointed out, that we 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 can revisit any of these things at any time. Adding it to this motion just ends up encumbering it in, in an odd way that uh, we're promising to come back by some kind of motion. We could still not come back even with promising it. But uh, any member here can put a, uh, an item on the agenda to be hit if, if something hit there. And if, if this thing passes and it does pass through the, uh, the legislature, we'll end up with uh, the registrars right back at, at, at the budget time, and, which would be appropriate and, and appropriately asking if it changes in the ways that we, we're starting to see it might. It, it would increase uh, their, their work uh, significantly. So I, I'm against the amendment. Anyone else from the RTM? <clears throat> Anybody else from the RTM? Re Representative Stepanek? Thank you. Sir? Well, I, I say yes to Representative Brooks' uh, suggestion uh, for the amendment because I, I, was, I was privileged to work on two election cycles, and uh, they were tough. They were just not a nightmare. Uh, it was over 7 p.m. till midnight the next day. Uh, and I think before we get jump into salary issues, maybe uh, uh, we should take a look at the process. We have to impl implement the law, that's true. But, but the way we implement the law, I wonder if we can do a better job. Thank you. Anyone else from the RTM wishes to speak to the amendment? Hearing none. Uh, rep oh, Mr. Halley, go ahead. No, no. That's on the right referral. This this wasn't no, this wasn't no 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 no. You're getting a little confused. We're not re-referring this. I'm sorry, I forget my. Come on up. Is this the motion to talk about it again? Yeah. I'm a little. Concerned here is this voting for a full time position because that's what it seems like it says on uh, your agenda. That's no. not the motion before it. No. Okay, yeah. so this is a part time position. <coughs> Mr. Moderator, part of the point of order, you talk right we, now. we are speaking Rips on the amendment. amendment. Not the, the main we're, motion, but. Yeah, what we're, we're dealing with Rao is the amendment portion that Representative Brooks brought up. Okay, I, I, I would, my comment on that is it seems to me that in order to make an informed decision, you have to have all the facts in front of you. And these facts are not going to be in front of you until November 8th or November 9th. Um, so you do not know what. Um, the scope of the Registrar of Voters position will be until that time. Um, and the response to um, Representative uh, Ingram's uh, um, comment about uh, whether they will be, whether this will be ready uh, immediate or not, it will not be. But I fully expect that this will be ready um, probably for the municipal elections because typically they will not run early voting as a, uh, you know, for the presidential election. Because, you know, it's, it, it, you tend not to roll, roll out the new stuff on your biggest elections, right? I mean, that's just generally the way they work it. So it's going to be a short window in which they will, they will rule on it and figure out exactly what early voting is. And if you look at early voting in other states, it's all over the map. Some of them have three days, some of them have a month. You know, it's all over the map. So to, to surmise what that is, is going to be a bit of a, you know, it's going to be a bit of a crapshoot. But at least, at the very least, you would know that early voting is going to take place and it's going to take place, um, 
you know, after this election or not. And so I would say, you know, it's a reasonable thing to say this should be revisited and some guarantee that it is revisited after the uh, November 8th election. All right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak to this item? If not, uh, we're taking a vote on Representative Brooks's amendment to uh, re revisit this item. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The amendment is defeated. We're back to the One main motion now. One abstention. One abstention, please. Two, please. Oh. I was a nay, but I, my voice is up. <laughs> you were a nay? Yes. Uh, you have one, okay. All right, we're back to the main motion now to approve this item. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none? No, I have discussion. Well, he's asking. I don't think you're quick to say hearing none. All right, come on, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Um, I, here's the problem I have. I'm going to have to vote yes for this. Because if I vote no, and everybody votes no, you know, or somebody do the math, 13 vote no, and I vote no, then it's 14, and it gets defeated, and people that are overworked aren't going to get compensated for that being overworked. This position, we, live in, we, we all see the climate around. We all see what's happening with voting and and how we've added so many layers and how important it's become on, on, to get everything right and to be, and we've added, you know, you can, you can, through the DMV and all these things, there's lots of things. I could read the list, but I'm not gonna bore you with it. I'm sure some of you have seen it. And so we're demanding this of these people but we don't want to compensate them properly. And, and I heard it said, well, then we have to pay health insurance. And I, I don't like that. That doesn't feel good for me. <clears throat> if it's the right thing to do, do it and pay the health insurance. I'm going to vote yes, but I think this is a mistake. I think we need to compensate them for a lot of reasons, but the number one reason is when you have good people doing the job and nobody can deny that Brantford elections go off cleanly, is goodly a word, and, and, and fairly every year. I've never seen or heard anything about Brantford elections. That's good people doing the job. Compensate them. And I'm going to vote yes, and I'm going to hate every minute of it. <laughs> Representative Preet. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, coming from the business world, uh, you know, most corporations have a human resource department. And it's their job to write up job descriptions, set salary ranges, and it's based on um, the ability, number one, for the company to pay, and also in line with other companies in the area. Um, this recommendation is coming through from our HR director. Um, we hired her, I think we pay her a nice salary, and I think she did her job. It's not, it's not our job to determine if the um, registrar of voters are doing a good job or not doing a good job. It's not our job to determine um, that Guilford pays their registrars $20,000 more than Brantford. Our HR director did her analysis, looked at other area towns, wrote her job description, and based on that, this was her recommendation. And I think we should follow it. Thank you. Okay, well, <coughs> Representative Everson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I would say uh, <coughs> I would agree with that. However, this process from the start has been flawed. The initial report that we did get from the human resources director did not give the committee uh, admin services enough information, a basis on which to make an informed decision. And that was repeatedly stated in the committee. That's why this has been talked about since the spring, going into the fall. The human resources director 
only recently went back and did a, a review after the comments that were made and came up with a higher number. Is this a perfect world scenario? Absolutely not. But if we do not agree to the increase in pay, the substantial increase, it would take them much longer to even get there. So I think this is a good place to start. Early voting is going to change the job and it probably needs to be looked at again. And I hope that that will happen during the budget process. Thank you. Uh, okay, Representative Mori and then uh, Representative. I just want to make a quick uh, point of clarification that human resources did not come back with a higher number in our last meeting. Uh, we rounded the number up from 30960 to $31,000 even. So just to make that point of clarification for everyone, thank you. Okay, Representative Amore. Yeah, just, um, I, I'm, I'm with Representative Brooks on this. I, um, I, I'm, I don't trust a lot of things um, uh, because when we had a presentation by the registrar on some of this information, our, the salary spread is all over the map. But when you look at the comments, made by those people who were being interviewed, they, a lot of them felt they were overworked and underpaid and frustrated and all of that kind of stuff. And we keep adding more and more responsibility. So while I, if I think um, uh, rep, Ed, that, the, um, that the data that was being drawn on was reliable, I would agree with you. But I, I, I don't feel like there is consistency in the data, there is consistency in the reporting. That's one part of my um, my wish for us to be able to revisit this. Now, maybe there's enough time. Budgets are starting to be developed in February and in January for the next budget year. So by that time, we'll know enough about um, whether early voting is going to be implemented or not. So we could probably factor that into a, a request, I think. I'm, I think I'm right on that. Uh, but I also think that the reluctance or the continued insistence that this is an hourly or a somehow less than professional job, and and the reluctance to pay benefits just feels really, really just not good to me. Um, this is a, an elected position with a lot of responsibility, and um, I, I'm going to support this because I don't want um, I don't want uh, them to not have the extra money that they deserve. Uh, but I wish we had better data, and I hope we revisit this in a really good way with good with better data next year. Anybody else? Uh, Representative Henschel? Uh, yes, two things. Number one, I'm, I'm going to vote in fav favor of this um, primarily because I believe, as Representative Ingraham said, that we can revisit this at any point in the future and modify it, and I think it probably will call for modification in the future. But I would like somebody to read exactly what we're voting on tonight because I think it's uh, not exactly what's on written up on the um, agenda. My understanding is that these are for part-time positions. And so what is the pay rate? What are the position? What is the status of the positions? <coughs> you know, what exactly are we voting on? Yeah. Okay, so just, just to clarify for everyone, so this language uh, was from our original May meeting when the positions were proposed to us as two full-time positions. Now you'll note at the end of this that it says, at a rate of pay recommended by the Human Resources Department. So the Human Resources Department came to us with a rate of pay recommended at $30,960. That is the rate of pay recommended by the Human Resources Department and we are voting on that number tonight, which admin services increased to round it out to $31,000 each part-time. So these are part-time positions. Correct. Okay. Anyone else in the chair wishes to speak to this item? Mr. Alley, you want to speak to this item? <coughs> So let me see if I understand this correctly. Then you're going to vote against the recommendation of this, of the board of selectmen who approved it at seventy thousand dollars. Is that correct? 
that it, it, during the budget process, it was approved by the Board of Selectmen at $70,000 each. So you're going against this. Point of, point of information, uh, the Board of Selectmen never voted on this item. This item was voted on through the Board of Finance and came to the RTM. It came through the Board, it came through the board of Selectmen. We had to go through them. They okayed it, and then it went to the Board of Finance. That's the process in which you do the budget. It, so, I defer so. to, to First Selectman Cosgrove, but my understanding was that it went through the Board of Finance and it came to this body, the RTM, as we vote on the budget. The Board of Selectmen does not vote on the budget. <laughs> it went through that process, it had to go before him, and we got approved. We, so we did put the placeholder in the budget for the full seven. Okay. I'm just trying to get this clarified, that's all. So you're going to change that. Okay. Now, um, a couple things. Uh, the board of, I mean, the um, HR director um, did not do an assessment on, um, she did it on seven, uh, eight, eight towns. And uh, of those eight towns, uh, three of them do not um, fit into uh, our size town or our, our model of doing that. One of them is touring, can touring into the, some type of model that I don't think even think is legal, but um, they, they have uh, a non-elected registrar of voters running the elections. I don't know how they can do that because that's against state statute, but I'm not getting into Torrington's problem. Um, and, so, and she did East Haven. East Haven does, um, you know, the problem with East Haven is East Haven has had three registrar of voters uh, on the Republican side in the last year. I talked to the one, I talked to one at the, uh, I, I presume she's still on the job, but I talked to her at the meeting of the of the rollback conference, and she says, yes, he was the third one. So if you want that type of model where there's a constant turnover of personnel, then, um, you, you know, that's a, good, that's a good thing to think about anyway. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't recommend that model, but it's up to you. The numbers that uh, I went and, and went to um, 13 towns within uh, the 25,000 to 30,000 population that fit in this state. There's 13 of them that fit into that category. Eight of the 13 are um, giving their registrar of voters more money than what you, you are looking to approve of tonight. $31,000, assuming that the, the HR director is correct, although I don't know how she's determined that I'm only working 999 hours. Hmm, I wonder how, I wonder how that number came up. But Assuming that she's correct on that, that is saying that you're paying me, you will be paying me, right now you're paying me less, but you will be paying me $31 an hour to do a job with a whole lot of responsibilities and no benefits. Good luck trying to find somebody to replace that. It won't happen. It's just, you know, that we're in a different environment now. You look at the, at the, um, at the town website, they, they, eight or nine jobs opening right now in the town of Brantford. And in order to fill this position, you have to fill it within the party and within a, in the voters of the town of Brantford. This is not something you can go and ask for, for somebody in Wethersfield to come down here and do that job. So you've you got to realize that this, there's a much tinier um, workforce that you can pull this from. So. Um, and, and, you know, I could go on and on, but I'll, you guys just have a long meeting and I'll just I'll let it go with that. Okay, hearing uh, any further discussion on this item? Someone in the back. Come forward and identify yourself, sir. Come up for the front. I'm asking to repeat his name. I didn't catch it. <laughs> Mike for TV. Good evening, folks. I'm Lord Sally. Okay. I'm. Uh, I work. I'm. I'm Dan's brother. Uh, I work. Uh, I've been working the elections in the town of Brantford for maybe 16 years now, something like that. I'm the moderator in the fifth district. Um, I just want to. Just want to inform the folks here, if they're not aware of it, that um, the election process 
in any town is not a seasonal job. It's not like, okay, we're having elections in November, so we're going to start working on it in like, like the, the third week in October. It's not like being a lifeguard at Brantford Point. You know, it's not like being somebody that runs the uh, rec department playgrounds at Indian Neck School, or something like that. It requires like somebody doing the job 52 weeks a year. And the reason for that is, is that everybody's concerned about the fact that there's people in the, on the rolls of the elect, electoral rolls that are dead and they're voting. You know, nev you've never heard of that, right? I hear that every single election. There's people that, there's people that are voting three times. You know, that's something that everybody talks about. And the Registrar of Voters Office is responsible for making sure that that doesn't happen. And it's not as easy as just saying, oh, I heard that Jane Smith just died, let me cross her off the list. You have to go through all kinds of research to make sure that you've got a death certificate, they're legitimately off the rolls, uh, to, to take them legitimately off the rolls. Also, people move in and out of town. You just can't say, oh, I know my next door neighbor moved, let me call the Registrar of Voters Office and have them removed from the rolls. There's a whole process by which you have to do that. So when you think that the job only is being worked in October and into November, it's actually being worked, you know, 52 weeks a year. So to make sure that the roles are accurate, make sure that there's no voter fraud, make sure that, that there's not uh, going to be some backlash when somebody says, oh, I know somebody voted that, that voted three times or something like that. There are occasionally times when there are mistakes that they happen. They're, they're, they're ones and twosies and they don't really affect the election and they try to correct them as best they can. But you need to know that this job is not just a seasonal job, which I think some people realize, think that that's what it is. That's not the case. And, and every year, the voting laws get more and more complex, which are gonna have the rules you have to follow, which you have to go through. Uh, this election is gonna have different rules by the Secretary of State, slightly different than they did last year or the year before or what, any, any year. So I, I just want you to think about the fact that if you think you're gonna hire somebody that's qualified for $31,000, that's gonna be a tough sell. I'm telling you that right now, okay? I have a little part-time job myself, work two days a week, I make $35,000. I don't have any responsibility for somebody coming down and, and, and uh, getting, uh, get, actually, you can get convicted for screwing up the election. You could go to jail if you screw it up. You know, so you need to take that into account. And I'm going to be, I'm dubious about the fact that the uh, towns that they surveyed, that we're in, the, we're, in the, we're in the range. Yeah, you're always in the range. We're in a range between 20 and 40, so you're 30. You know, how many towns are actually 20, 27 or something? Two. And you're, in, you're on the bottom of the range. So you need to think about that. You want good elections in town or do you want to just have baked elections in town? You've got you to gotta get qualified people for that. That's that's my that's my that's my my little little spiel. You need to okay. take that into account. Thank you. And I, I agree with Ray. I think after the election, uh, when if they do pass this new uh, new change, that it's going to make the voting the voting thing completely different. The job's going to be completely different, and it's going to be much. It's going to take much more than just quote unquote twenty hours a week part time or something like that. That's all okay. I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak for this? Representative Brooks. I, I, I would hearken I back to what just happened previously, maybe 45 minutes ago, when there was a change, a very drastic change in the the decision that came out of committee to what happened this evening. It would harken back to a comment made that it's only $70,000. I would harken back to this is a positive step for the town. This, what we're talking about right now is not a positive step for a town. It's the blood of this town. We're not talking about $70,000.
I would put up a, an amendment right now if I thought I had any chance of succeeding to make this position $42,000. But I'm not gonna do that just for symbolism. This is not, this is a very, very important job. And we need to show, just like we showed a little bit ago, unanimously, I've never seen it unanimous, ever. Unanimously, we show that we support it. This, we need to show that we support. So I implore that we have this discussion again, and not in April, but in a few months from now. Any further discussion for members of the RTM? <clears throat> I, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, point of order. Representative Verderam, um, just, and actually anyone who can answer this, maybe um, Town Clerk Arpin, the agenda item doesn't read correctly. Is, am I correct in saying that? Item five, if you look at so, it. So through you um, to Representative Leach. Uh, so it's very confusing. Um, but the, the part that I would underline bold and highlight and do every textual thing I could to this is at a rate of pay recommended by the Human Resources Department. That's the part that we're emphasizing right now. Okay. And I'll and I'll defer to Representative Black. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Representative Black. I was going to ask a point of Through information, actually. Moderate. I mean, the item agenda says that the Board of Finance had recommended that the RTM evaluate the request, and that was to evaluate it pursuant to an analysis by the HR director, an analysis that had not happened when the Board of Finance acted on it. It subsequently happened. Um, Admin Services spent six months on this, as uh, Chairman Bitterami said. It's you know we we got more information from the registrars. We I know Representative Everson did research on our total budgeting because it's not just one position, but showed us as, uh, you know where we were in our total amount. So. The, the resolution is just to set the rate of pay at 31,000 per registrar per year um, as a part-time position. That's, that's it. But, okay. I mean, the way, it, the way it came in, the way it's on the agenda is because it was just evaluated. That's what they did. They evaluated the requests. They decided okay. not to go to full-time. And not and to set the rate of pay and the, in accordance with the HR director, other than rounding it off to uh, thirty-one thousand, and that was after I, you know I went to many of those meetings after a great deal of research and work um, by the members of admin services. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else from the RTM wish to speak? Okay. So, just for clarification purposes, also on the on the uh, call itself, um, this this is part time positions, part time positions. Yes. Okay. Everybody understand that? Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion by Representative Vernaram to approve this, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. One opposed is Representative Barron. One abstain. Abstention. Abstentions. Representative Conkhorn and Representative Wachowski. With two abstentions and one opposed, right? right? The sign and passes. Moving on to item number seven. To consider inappropriate, adopt the policies of virtual meetings into our town meeting rules. Representative Black. Uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, again, uh, rules and ordinances did not have a forum, so I ask that this matter be re-referred, and I'll look for a second to that uh, second. motion. Second. Motion to re-refer, oh, is there a second? Who seconded it? I did. Representative Brooks. Oh, you did it. Well, well, I gotta get one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any discussion on re-referring this item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Some sentence? Okay. This item is re-referred. Moving on to item number eight. Just a note, Representative Hines just dropped. Okay. His page Representative Hines down. just left. Uh, what is it? It's 10. Moving on to item eight, to consider an appropriate approval transfer request from the Sustainability and Compliance Manager for fiscal 2022 solid waste management and recycling budget as follows. From overtime, $6,349 to other fuel, $5,517 and to advertising, advertising, printing and binding, $832 for a total of $6,349. Representative Conklin. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The uh, Public Service Committee uh, did not have a quorum to address this, so I uh, need to make a motion to waive rule 4.11. 4. 4. 4. Right. Yeah, that Motion no, on the floor to waive rule 4.11. Is there a second? Yeah, yeah. Representative Sullivan. Representative Sullivan, okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, this item, we'll, we would just waive rule 441. So, okay, so the next motion will be to uh, approve this transfer. Second it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't explain it then. Uh, all right. Motion on the floor to approve. It's been seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none? Sing all those in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The item passes. Item number nine, to consider an appropriate or approve a transfer request from the Brantford Counseling and Community Services for fiscal 2022 human services budget as follows. From regular wages and salaries, $9,187, to credit card processing fees, 2,000, to property general liability insurance, $6,079, to postage, $103, to technology, $657, to furniture and fixtures, $242, to overtime, $106, for a total of $9,187. Representative Verderam. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this transfer is to simply close out the fiscal year, and it passed committee with a unanimous vote, and I move its favorable passage. <clears throat> Motion on the floor to approve this transfer. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The item carries. <clears throat> Moving on to item number 10. Nine. To consider it appropriate Nine. approval. No, it's 10. It's 10. It's, 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 it's now 10. Add one to everything. We yeah, so right. To consider an appropriate approval transfer request from the Director of Human Resources for the Fiscal 2022 and Fire Services for Fiscal 2023 as follows. From... Human resources, $6,540. Oh, Two, employment training, $6,290. Two, longevity, $6,540. And from contingency, $141,107. Two, regular wages and salaries, $91,691. Overtime, $6,750. Overtime public events, $450. Vacation, $7,505. Holiday pay, $6,009. Sick, sick pay, $3,552. Education incentive, $3,597. Accrued payroll expense, $353. Stipends, $19,500. Uniform and clothing allowance is $1,700 for a total of $141,107. Uh, ways and needs for this and administrative services. So, Representative Verem, go first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this is another transfer to close out the fiscal year, and this item passed committee with a unanimous vote, and I move its favorable passage. All right. Representative Healy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Yes, the second half was just to uh, pay for the contract that we already approved and passed through a committee for to nothing. And I move for its favorable passage. Thank you. Okay. Motion on the floor from both committees to approve this transfer. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? The item carries. Moving on to item 11, to consider an appropriate approval request from the fire chief to appropriate an additional 
$210,000 to fiscal 2022 apparatus sinking fund as follows. From contingency, $60,000. From interest general purpose, uh, purpose 46,000. From interest general schools, 104,000 for a total of 210,000. And two, transfer out 700 funds for a total of 210,000. And from fund, capital fund 700, increase transfer in general fund 210,000 and increase transfer out to fire apparatus fund 709, $210,000. Representative Healy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ways and means met last week and heard this, and this is basically uh, to the transfers to pay for our sinking fund for the next fire truck. Chief Mahoney had said if he doesn't put the order in by November 1st, uh, that truck can go up another 7%. Uh, it passed through committee four to nothing, and I put its uh, favorable passage in the form of a motion. Thank you. Motion on the floor to approve these transfers. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Representative Sullivan? Uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, to Representative Healy, just a point of clarification. Um, this is not just to augment the sinking fund, this is actually to make a purchase from the sinking fund, is that correct? I'm sorry, can you repeat Yeah, that? it's not just augmenting the sinking fund, there's actually gonna be a purchase made of a new vehicle from this, adding this balance in to make the total balance to purchase, is that correct? That's correct, it's looking, they're looking to use this to put the order in yeah. before November So it's 1st. not just putting money away for a later date, we're actually gonna use it. No, I was no. going to say I would defer to first selectman on this, if anything. Um, but no, I thought it was just improving, adding to our sinking fund, correct, General? Yeah, it would. Can I, I can Clarification? Or, yeah, I, I, since I was sitting in on that, I talked to the chief a lot. This, this is to augment a sinking fund that we will now go and cut the purchase order right. for the fire truck. So there is today. an imminent purchase coming. Yeah. It's not Correct. just sitting. Well, that, that, that's that, all that, tru that yeah. truck could be two years from delivery. That's right, but the, the, but the, the order is being made. But, but the, but the, yes. the dollar will be allocated. Representative Sullivan, the reason that was done is the fact that the, we don't know when we're going to get this apparatus. It's just like a car is out there with yeah, all the, yeah, yeah. so, so. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> just one thing. All right, yeah. Okay, any further discussion from members of the RTM? Hearing none, all, all those in favor of the transfer signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Aye. Item carries. Moving on to item 12, to consider an appropriate, approve an appropriation for fiscal 2023 for the Coastal Resilience Fund to conduct a climate resilience engineering evaluation of the wastewater treatment plant and collection system and to approve the following resolution. Resolve. The RTM approves an appropriation of 75000 in the Coastal Re Resilience Fund. This appropriation will be funded through an appropriation from the fund balance, from increased fund balance transfer of 75000 and to increase consulting services $75,000. Representative Healy. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. So again, last week when we met and heard this, uh, this is basically going to fund a uh, study survey of our uh, waste treatment plant and to find any weaknesses, especially if there was anything like a 50 year storm or whatnot, and what we may have to do going forth. So again, these funds are just for that, just to study the survey. Uh, it passed through committee four to nothing, and I put its passage here in the form of motion. Thank you. Motion on the floor for this transfer. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Representative Henschel? Yes, uh, just a little background on this. This. Um, was an initiative of the Coastal Vulnerability Working Group and the WPCA. Uh, the two groups got together uh, to look at the beginning of a study of the uh, making the wastewater treatment plant and the pump stations more resilient, basically, in, uh, in response to sea level rise, climate change, et cetera, and the fact that uh, right now those, both those systems appear to be very vulnerable looking forward. So this is the very the first part of the study, uh, which will look at just the vul identifying the vulnerabilities. After that, this part, this part has been done, and an RFP has been written, currently written uh, and ready to go. Um, 
it will identify the, where the vulnerabilities are, then there would be a second study will follow it, which will be basically looking at what the responses to those vulnerabilities might be from a, a conceptual basis. A third step then would be an actual engineering response where the engineering and construction documents would be created. Fourth step would be the construction work on it. So it's a long, this is a process, this is the beginning step. Um, I hope that everybody will, will vote to approve this, this use of the funds. Uh, it's uh, an ideal first step in the use of the uh, resilience fund that, that Jim Finch uh, initiated. Um, it makes a lot of sense and it will allow us to get the RFP out on the street uh, as soon as possible. So hopefully everybody will vote for it. Thanks. Any further, further discussion from members of DRT? Representative Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm also in favor of this, you know, knowing that sea level rise is a problem and that uh, future flooding is probably going to be happening in a shoreline community. Um, but I just also want to take a chance to uh, point out that there is a coastal resiliency uh, fund from the state that's available right now. Uh, there's a $10 million fund, so I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe the town could look into putting an application to those dollars as well, which could uh, add to these resources that we're funding now or maybe some other studies um, in the future for other uh, areas in the town. So just a consideration and something I would uh, hope the town's looking into. We're submitting a request. Yeah. Perfect. Andy Foot, Representative Everson. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I also sit on the Coastal Vulnerability Committee and... Um, I would like to commend Peter Henschel at the amount of work that he has done uh, to put this together, to take this initiative along with uh, one of our members, Paul Muniz. Um, so it, it's a lot of uh, labor has gone into this and getting the WPCA on board. So it's an important step that the town really should take um, because, you know, Everybody likes it when their sewage goes the right way. <laughs> Good point. Good yep. point. Any further discussion from members of the RTM? Hearing none, <laughs> all those in favor of the transfer signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Transfer carries. Moving on to item 13, to consider an appropriate approval transfer request from the finance director for fiscal 2022 as follows. From fund 101, contingency 39,000 to transfer out 700 fund 39,000 and to from fund 700 increase transfer in from general fund 39,000 and increase software clear government clear gov budgeting solutions 39,000 representative Healy yes thank you mr. moderator <coughs> excuse me last week when uh, our committee heard this uh, basically this is a software program that was looked into by our finance director, in conjunction with the other departments, it's going to make budget time move much more quickly and smoothly. Apparently, we couldn't say exactly how many man hours we were going to save, but it does work also with our unit system very well. Uh, it passed through committee four to nothing. Uh, it put its favorable passage in that form of motion. Uh, I would say that going forth, though, however, um, there's the entire town. And employees apparently will be utilizing it, hence that's why the annual licensing fee is going to cost us also another thirty-six thousand four hundred a year. Thank you. <coughs> Motion on the floor to approve. Uh, any discussion from members of the RTM? Hearing none. All those in favor? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Transfer carries. Moving on to item number. 14 against 15 is to consider and appropriate approve the Board of Finance recommended capital fund 700, 720, and 730 reports pursuant to capital fund projects ordinance section 47-4 expiration of funds. I, I will, as we discussed earlier, I'm encouraging each chair of the committees to hear, to hear this. If they need this, some additional information, the packet was sent out from the uh, Finance director, if you have any questions of uh, uh, on that? I suggest you contact him. So this will be sent to all the various committees to handle for next month. All right. Any other business to come before the RTM, Mr. Moderator? Yeah, Representative Ingraham. Uh, 
we had the Veterans Parade Committee meeting at 4.30 today, so I was tasked to uh, remind everyone that the parade is on November 6th. Uh, meet on the green at 6 o'clock. All elected officials are invited to, uh, to march with the veterans. That day, uh, so the ceremony is about a half hour in the green at 1 o'clock, and we kick off and do our loop about 1.30. So if you'd like to, like to join us, come on down. Representative Brooks, you have a question on that? No? <laughs> we can't delay it. <laughs> we, we, we can't re-refer this to Representative re Brooks. I mean, you could. You, you could. could. It's tricky. It's very tricky. It's a lot of words. If it rains, we're at the high school. So. All right. Any other business to come before the RTM? Hearing none, motion to adjournment. Adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? She's not, adjourn. She's not here. Representative Who's second? Unless Representative Terrell. Terrell? Well, she's not here. She's not here. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Wait. We are adjourned. Who seconded it? I did. <laughs> this program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.